What's going on everyone? This is Happy Feats and today is the day many of you have waited very patiently for. No, this is not a clickbait title. I am really going to give you a full tutorial on how to mod your Pump It Up dance pads. Now before we start, I do need to mention that this is my personal style and there are many other ways to mod a pad. While this is an instructional video, just remember this is based off my personal preference for modding and that there are many other ways to do it. Okay, so if you're going to be following along while modding your pads, you will need the following things. One pair of scissors, one Allen wrench or hex key, Gorilla Tape, 3M indoor mounting tape, 3M outdoor mounting tape, and business cards. The link to all of these products are inside the video description by the way. So first let's go over the sensors that I choose to completely disconnect on both dance pads. For the outer arrows on both corners for player 1 and 2, I disconnect the two sensors that are furthest away from where you are playing. The ones that I am pointing out on the video are the ones that I leave disconnected. I disconnect said sensors because I am raising my panels up so that I don't get that stepping in a crater feeling. Having the other two enabled still gives you plenty of sensitivity and the reality is that you are not going to be hitting that far out. If you are leaving all four sensors enabled with this mod, you will run into problems. This is also safe for co-op players, so don't worry. Moving on to the center panels, I personally disable the bottom or top sensors, but one or the other is totally fine. It just depends for each pad, so you have to do some trial and error to see which is better to have turned off. And last we have the inner four arrows for double play. I leave all the sensors enabled aside from the very bottom for each blue panel and the very top for each red panel. Now that we've covered which sensors I keep disabled and enabled, we can now go into how I modify the pads. For all of the red and blue panels, I first cut off a piece of the 3M indoor mounting tape and place it across each L bracket. These brackets are located above all four sensors up against each wall. Next, I take the same tape and place a small square piece on one of the two black blocks that are located at the corners of the panel where the screws go in. I only put one here, however, so make sure to only put down one square of tape for each corner so that should give you a total of four squares. If you cover up all eight squares, you will run into stuck panel issues. Next thing I do is cut off a piece from the 3M outdoor mounting tape and place it up against the metal side above the L brackets. This is where the magic happens and what makes a very big difference for playing. Applying this will prevent the panels from wobbling back and forth during play and will hold the panels still so you get less sliding around panels and a firm hit while playing. Here is a before versus after comparison video. Be aware that you will have to mess around with each panel because they are not the exact same dimensions which means doing this for all four walls can make it impossible for you to put the actual arrow panel back in place. Typically, I do two to three walls for my pads, but fiddle around with it until you can put the arrow panel back in place without much resistance. It's normal for the panel to be a bit resistant when you're trying to put it back in place, but if it feels nearly impossible to put it back in, you have too much tape and need to remove some. Something I do if I take one of the tapes off but then have the wiggling trouble again is instead put a layer or two of Gorilla Tape right above the L brackets instead of the other tape. Gorilla Tape is much thinner and will let you fine tune how much thickness you need in order to get that perfect amount required. Also if you have a sensor that is very undersensitive, this is where business cards come in handy. I personally tear off a piece and slide it either under the actual sensor or in between the L bracket and sensor. Believe it or not, this makes a really big difference and has helped me countless times. If you have an oversensitive sensor, simply swap it out with another one instead. The last thing for me to go over are the yellow panels. These are the most difficult ones to modify, so pay very close attention. I personally do not add any tape on the L brackets, but I do add the tape everywhere else, like the other panels. The reason I skip the L brackets is because of how often you are using this panel during gameplay. The more you lift a panel, the more prone you are to getting goods and bads. I find it best to leave the center L brackets alone, but feel free to try and add some tape there yourself if you'd like to. Once the modding is complete, give the pads a test and play some songs to see how it feels. If you notice a panel is stuck, remove a layer or two of the tape and it should be fine. One more thing that I should mention, since many have asked me about this on stream, is why do I choose to use the indoor tape on the L brackets instead of using the outdoor tape? This is actually a really good question, but the reasoning is because the indoor tape gives you more of a bounce when playing, making it more comfortable to play during fast songs with drills or runs. The outdoor tape gives you more of a cushiony feel, almost like you're stomping on sand, but some players do prefer this feeling, so feel free to swap the tape if you'd like. And there you have it. That is how I mod my Pump It Up dance pad. I wanted to put this video up on YouTube so that players can spread the information and hopefully get their arcade owners or technicians to fix up their own pads. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.